Hola, bienvenidos chicos. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hola, me llamo Maria. And if you're not new here, you can probably tell that I sound really ill. <laughs> but we're here, we're doing another video. The long awaited apprenticeship story. Right. <laughs> I have been putting on of making this video for so long and honestly I've been trying to record it like three times and every single time I like burst into tears. So we're not going to do any emotions today, nothing too personal, going to keep it fun, keep it happy and throughout explaining how I went through my apprenticeship, showing you how my tattooing has improved since like scratcher to now junior artist. Throughout this video, I will be answering some of the questions that I received from a really, really lovely girl who messaged me directly on my Instagram and was just curious about what got me into tattooing. So throughout, I will be answering these specific questions that she's been asking me. I was always an artist. I did art GCSE when I was younger. And even in like math lessons, science lessons, whatever, I would always draw on my hand, draw on my friend's hands, or even like in my planner. I went around to tattoo studios and I was asking for apprenticeships. I went in person and I had this massive book of drawings, my portfolio. I do have a video of my portfolio if you want to see my artwork, how I laid it out. I mean, all my drawings were quite sketchy and one of the comments I did get from a tattoo studio was that my artwork was too sketchy to be tattoo designs. You can probably see that in my portfolio I have sketches and then I also have completed designs. When you're first going around to studios and if you're asking for an apprenticeship, don't be disheartened because you will hear no a lot of the time, okay? I heard no for many, many, many years and it wasn't until one, all you need is one yes and then you're in like, you've got the job, right? <laughs> and each studio was a different experience. One of these studios even told me on the spot to draw a rose. And I'll admit that rose was probably the most rose I've ever drawn. Obviously I didn't get the job. <laughs> but since then I took it upon myself. I went home and I drew a rose every day after that. From going into tattoo studios, even if they do say no, you can still chill in the tattoo studio and you can ask advice on how to improve your portfolio. You're gonna see what you're lacking in your portfolio presentation, whether you need more color work, if you like, like myself, if you need more completed designs to show like what you're all about. I'll admit it's literally just trial and error. Trial and error and if they say no, so what? Move on to the next one. <laughs> My first experience for a proper tattoo experience, it was almost like I was auditioning for the place of apprentice. I went to this local tattoo studio. I would go in maybe two times a week. I would help do studio duties, like help with deliveries, help the piercer, organize paperwork, um, help clean, very basic tattoo jobs, really. My mentor told me to sketch, told me to draw up his own stencils um, for free, obviously. I didn't get paid for this um, with the hopes that I would get the apprenticeship at the end of it. There was one day that my mentor even instructed me to go home and just to draw something. He didn't really care what it was. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna draw a peacock. Doing two separate drawings. I did a realistic black and gray peacock. And then the second one was like a near traditional bright blue colored peacock. And also because I was determined to show him that I wanted to start tattooing, I even tattooed myself. And the result of that was him telling me that he wasn't impressed with my work. <laughs> and then he told me that I should leave. <laughs> After that failed attempt, I decided that it was time for me to move to Spain. My intention when I moved to Spain was to look for a tattoo apprenticeship and to work in the bars. Funny enough, when I moved to Barcelona, I actually found a tattoo studio that was willing to take me on. They had a look at my drawings, had a look at my portfolio. The position I got when I worked at this tattoo studio in Barcelona was primarily as a receptionist. They put me on the front desk. I would help the customers come in to sign the consent forms, um, to organize appointments for the clients, to watch the tattooers while they're working. On the quiet days, especially if there are tattoos that are very, very, very small, I was given the opportunity to start tattooing. 
I can probably tell you now that 90% of the tattoos that I did when I first started out were like blowout tattoos, like <laughs> they were, they were shocking. But then my time as a receptionist wasn't really wasted because like if I couldn't tattoo, I would still be drawing. I would draw every day and my drawings were now getting more elaborate. Like I was so inspired when I lived in Barcelona. Another job which I did at this studio to kind of generate some more cash, because at the time I wasn't being paid very much at all. I was getting paid 10 euro a day. Yeah, not enough to survive or pay rent, that's definitely for sure. <laughs> but I was given 10 euro a day just to do the reception work and the cleaning. To generate some more cash flow, especially for me, I offered to do henna tattoos on like the children, if their parents are getting tattooed. Because it was a tattoo studio, I was able to use all the stencil equipment, which meant that I could do tattoo style henna tattoos, which was actually pretty cool. Like I wouldn't mind doing that again, to be honest, that was actually really fun. COVID messed up everything. I lost my job because of COVID. And then I lost my other job, my bartending job at the same time because of COVID. And we were in self isolation in Spain was horrendous. It, I was not allowed outside like period. Otherwise I would get fined by the police. One benefit of lockdown was that I actually started drawing more. Like I would wake up and I'd spend a whole day and then produce a drawing by the end of that day. This is where I created the drawings that actually got me my tattoo apprenticeship. I do have a video about those drawings as well. That video was probably one of the first videos I ever posted on YouTube and which has now led me to get this far on my YouTube as well. So lockdown wasn't all that bad. Something I would recommend to someone who is looking for a tattoo apprenticeship is do not give up. Honestly, there are so many opportunities out there and you are so talented. Like you can do this. Part of tattoo studios kind of like weeding out the week is by challenging them. Only those who are really, really determined, they want to see someone who is so passionate about tattooing is that they would do anything to do it. If you go into a tattoo studio asking for an apprenticeship and they reply saying that, oh, sorry, we don't have space for an apprentice, but we are looking for a, a receptionist. I'm sorry, but like, that is like a step in the door. And once you have that step in the door, the tattoo studio will start to know you. You're already in the environment so you can start watching people tattoo. And eventually they will offer you that apprenticeship. Like you'll be at the top of the list. I did have an experience also while I was in Spain where I went into this tattoo studio maybe a couple of times um, because I was invited to by the owner's mother, I think. I overshadowed loads of tattoo artists. I watched intensely like what they were doing. I analyzed like how fast they were running the machines, what style everyone was doing, how they were moving the machines and stuff like this. That experience didn't really end very well. I did get shouted at by the owner. Um, he was a bit of a prick to be honest but the tattoo artists that did let me overshadow them they were so helpful and one of them did even say that this is part of the apprenticeship moving from studio to studio makes you learn new things anyway i've come back to england looking again for the apprenticeship i'm literally at my final straw i was so close to moving to america because i couldn't find anywhere in my hometown that would take me on as an apprentice. Until one day that I was completely tipsy with one of my girlfriends and we went past at one of these tattoo studios. Granted, I should probably shouldn't have been this tipsy. Sat down with a piercer who was also the manager. I showed him my Instagram profile, which had all my drawings on there. And then the next morning I woke up not only with the most insane headache but i also woke up with an apprenticeship so yeah i got the apprenticeship after five years of trying i wasn't the only apprentice starting there when i started there were supposedly two other apprentices that worked there too but when i arrived there was only one other who was a guy and there was supposed to be a third but she never turned up so example a of what not to do don't do that
<laughs> if you're given an apprenticeship, you've got to take it. Duties, duties around the studio meant arriving at 9 or 9.30 in the morning. That I really, really struggled with. I'm not an early riser at all. Hoovering, mopping, cleaning, answering phone calls, messaging back people, handing out consent forms to clients when they came into the door, and helping setting up and cleaning down stations for the boss and for helping the piercer as well. The piercer was always fully booked. Our piercer works her butt off, honestly. She was like the, my biggest inspiration at the studio. I actually started tattooing quite quickly, mainly because I've had this like previous experience within tattoo studios Although my tattoos weren't amazing, I mean, it was something. This studio was more like, was definitely a street shop. People always coming in and out. It was smack bang in the center of town. So slowly, slowly I started building my client base, which meant that I was tattooing more than I was answering the phone or doing admin. If someone came in with a slightly more challenging design, I would feel nervous. I would get so many butterflies in my stomach but I would push myself to do it. I'd be like, you know what, I can do this. By pushing yourself, you don't realize what you can do until after you've done it, right? When it came to shading, I really struggled to get my head around how shading actually worked. So the way that I kind of like dealt with that was that I started doing shading with dot work. And partly that is why I, I love doing dot work in some of my pieces. It's kind of like an homage to what I did when I first started out in tattooing. But mainly the kind of tattoos that you do as an apprentice are very small, outline, simple designs. In my old studio, we always had guest artists coming in every now and then. We had two artists. There was one, a gentleman from Italy and this lady from Spain, or from Mexico, sorry, from Mexico. And these two people really, really inspired me and taught me how to do like stipple whip shading. But having guest artists really does help broaden your knowledge because what can happen if you're in a studio watching the same people again and again and again, you don't learn anything new or different because they do their style their way. And it's only when you have new people that come into the studio do you find out that there are other ways to do similar things. My tattooing did get better within a really short amount of time. With the apprenticeship, one of the benefits is because you go into work and you are tattooing day after day and that's how you learn. One of the developments in my artwork and I can see the difference is when I was working two days a week to when I was working five days a week. I got more consistent, I got more confident. Confidence is key, oh my goodness. When I first started, I was so nervous to tattoo anyone, but you have to get over that anxiety. You have to get over it. That's when you can truly get comfortable and then produce beautiful artwork. Towards the end of the first year, you could see that my designs were getting more complicated. I started using color. I started using different line weight. Though I did finally have my first client who asked me to do a sleeve for him and forever I will love my client for letting me do this. We did a geometric sleeve um, across six months. He worked in the Air Force, so his training, I think, made him very determined to sit through very painful sessions. I kid you not, I... I would say I'm sorry, but it looks sick, so <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> and then towards the end of my apprenticeship, this is when I started doing bigger pieces. I was doing probably like day sessions rather than smaller little pieces. And that's when my time at that studio came to a close. But yeah, no one really gives you a certificate at the end of the day. But now I'm at this new studio. I am now officially like self-employed. I have my license. So it only took really around a year and a half after starting my apprenticeship. I haven't found my style yet. I mean, I'm used to gravitate towards black and gray. Now I think I'm dipping into color. I will admit an apprenticeship is very intense. You do have to basically do what you're told. You have to be humble and there is a lot of ass kissing. You only have to hold through for about a year and a half and then you've got the job of your dreams. Although my boss did try and fire me for no reason at least like three times when he was really drunk. But it's fine. 
I turned up the next day and I was like, you ain't firing me. <laughs> As I said earlier, don't give up. If this is truly what you want, if being an artist honestly gives you so much passion, then I can't recommend to you enough that a tattoo artist's life is just <laughs> amazing. <laughs> If you want me to go further into like a Q&A, I would love to do a Q&A about it. Um, but I need you guys to leave comments down below so I can answer them. If you want to see more content like this, then please hit a like on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I guess I'll see you guys soon. Ciao queridos. <laughs>